Um, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. To the California Commission on Disability Access Education and Outreach. Meeting is now called to order on Wednesday, August 24th at um, 1.30 p.m., 1.31 p.m. Um, Abigail, I'll turn it over you, to you to do the housekeeping. Thank you so much, Commissioner Chella Hessen. This education and outreach committee meeting will be on Zoom via teleconference and held at the California Commission on Disability Access Headquarters, located at 400 R Street, Suite 312 in Sacramento, California, zip code 95811. Per Senate Bill 189, the Bagley-King teleconferencing re restrictions have been suspended through July 1st, 2023. Therefore, committee members are not required to list their remote locations. Members of the public may participate by Zoom or teleconference from any location. This meeting is being captioned and recorded. To assist in this effort, please state your first and last name each time you speak and speak loud and clear. The live captioning link has been included in the link, has been included in the chat for your use. Public participants can use the raise hand function to alert committee of when they would like to speak. And we will also give an opportunity for public members who have called into the meeting at which they can unmute themselves. If you're attending the meeting via teleconference, please press star six on your keypad to unmute or to mute yourself. If you would like to alert CCDA, press star nine telephonically to raise your hand and staff will call on you. Please remember to mute yourself if you are not speaking in order to reduce noise and technical issues. And if you are having technical issues throughout the meeting and need assistance, please use the chat function to alert CCD staff, or you can email us at ccda at dgs.ca.gov. Thank you, Abigail. Uh, we'll now go to agenda item one, roll call. Abigail, will you please lead us to the roll call? Of course. So first off, we have Commissioner Chair, Chair Sue L. Hessen. Present. All right. And then we have Commissioner Michael Paravagna. Present with the help of staff. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Commissioner Ashley Leon Vasquez. Present. Awesome. Thank you for coming as well. Committee member Zenit Hassan. Present. Awesome. Thank you as well for coming. Committee member Arnie Lerner. Okay, and then committee member Steven Simon. All right. And with those who are present, Commissioner Chair L. Hessen, we do have quorum. Great, thank you. All right. And then, uh, oh, my apologies. Um, at this time, I'm gonna refer to Teresa um, so she can help identify other significant members in this meeting as well. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner, Chair Commissioner L. Hessen. I see we have Michelle Davis here from Division of State Architect. Great. Um, I see we have Erin Carruthers. Um, I also see we have Diana Pastora Carson and Dee Shaw. These are the only members that I am seeing right now. Are there any other members or any other attendees that would like to be acknowledged? Chair Commissioner Lahessen, I do not see any other members or indication. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to move forward with agenda item number two, which has to do approval of the May 18th 2022 uh, meeting minutes. Um, if everyone's had a chance to look at the education outreach committee meeting minutes, I would like to hear if there are any questions or if there is a motion to approve the minutes. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? This is committee met member Zena, I'll move. Thank you. May I have a second?
Uh, this is Ashley, Commissioner Ashley Leon Vasquez. Um, I'll second. Thanks, Ashley. <clears throat> okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we have any um, abstained or, um, yeah, absent, uh, abstained? None. This is Commissioner okay. Paravani. I'll abstain. I don't believe I was at that meeting. Thank you. Chair Commissioner <clears throat> El Hessen, um, yes. I am just let in uh, committee member Stephen Simon. Great. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome. My apologies. It's okay. Technical difficulties. We got it. We love you having you here. Um, all right. So there are no other comments. I'd like to move to approve the agenda item. So do we do we do a real roll call for approval, um, Teresa? Uh, for uh, agenda item two, for the uh, minutes, for the, the teleconference yes. minutes, um, yes. yes, you will need a, a, a first and a second. Okay, we got the first and the second. So, and uh, we had the, all those in favor and then one absentee. Is there anything else that we need to do before we move on to agenda item three? Uh, no, Chair Commissioner El okay. Hassan. Thank you. All right. Uh, so. At this point for item um, number three, comments from the public or issues that are not on this agenda is now open. So if we have any um, members in the public that would like to speak at this point, please. I see Aaron Carruthers hand up. Please go ahead. I just unmute yourself so we can hear you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, I think also Diana Pastora is here and um, if possible, if she's able to speak, um, it'd be great if she spoke first, um, Diana Pastor Carson, and then I'll speak after her. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Erin. Thank you all. Um, I apologize, I could not find the raise hand. I, I teach 500 students a semester and I could not find, and I teach it virtually. And today I cannot find the raise hand feature. I'm so sorry. Um, I can't find it either, so it's a system. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. Well, Aaron found it. So he's way ahead of us. I, <laughs> kudos to you, Aaron. Um, so my name is Diana Pastora Carson. I am a sibling advocate for my brother, Joaquin Carson, who was institutionalized for 15 years of his life. Um, and our family fought for three years to get him out of Fairview Developmental Center. He now lives in an environment that I call durable. We created on, on my property, my family uh, found a property with uh, a barn that we converted into an apartment for him because of behavioral dysregulation. Joaquin requires durable environments. And so in 2020, we had to evacuate twice from our neighborhood in Hamul, and we had nowhere to go with Joaquin. There were no hotel rooms that we could go to that would have been safe for him. There were no um, evacuation sites available for him um, that would have been safe for him or anybody else. And we tried to, in a, you know, tr very quickly tried to find places that were funded through the Department of Developmental Services, like adult day programs or even parks and recreation departments that were closed because of COVID at the time. And nobody would let us in to their durable environment to keep my brother safe and to have it. And he's got two to one staff that would have made sure that he was okay and you know that everything was taken care of. Um, so why I'm here is I had the wonderful fortune of meeting with the executive director of Disability Rights California, Andy Imperato, and State Council on Developmental Disabilities, Aaron Carruthers, and then the Office of Emergency Services, Vance Taylor, and then the California Commission on Disability Access, Phil McFall. We met on the 2nd of August, and it was suggested that maybe I bring this up to you. And Aaron, thank you for being here to support um, this being brought up to see what solutions we can come up with. I've also met separately with 
uh, um, representatives from the Department of Developmental Services. I've also met uh, with Scott Winley of the US Access Board, and I have a meeting next week with Health and Human Services, and I can't remember the name of the person right now. Um, but I'm looking at, you know, for Joaquin, a plan A is, you know, we have to have some kind of either a motor home, which we, our family has purchased. Um, but even then it's not like, where do we take it? Where if he's having behavioral dysregulation, somebody's gonna call the police on him um, when they see him out in a public mo motor home park, you know? Um, it would be great to have a plan B, which is having durable accommodations be the norm at hotels, that there's at least one room or two that is accessible to somebody like Joaquin um, that could be made ready very quickly. So I'm not sure on time limits, um, but that's the gist of why I'm here, just to bring it to your attention that Joaquin isn't the only person who needs durable mm -hmm. accommodations as an emergency option and just, you know, in general, when families need to travel. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. This definitely falls into our um, emergency preparedness. Can I ask what the emergency was that you had to evacuate? Yes, wildfires, twice. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Before I say anything, I'll, I'll let um, Aaron please speak. Uh, thank you, commissioners and uh, Madam Chair. Um, Diana, thank you so much for bringing this critical issue to the State Council's attention. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Aaron Carruthers. I'm the Executive Director of the California State Council on Developmental Disabilities. Um, if we are a sister entity to yours, um, we are uh, a state entity that's created under federal law um, to make sure to be the guiding force for positive life altering changes in the lives of people with developmental disabilities. Um, we work with um, we've worked with Diana in the past and, and many other um, family advocates, uh, parent advocates, sibling advocates, um, and people with developmental disabilities themselves, self-advocates on barriers that they see that keep them from living fully integrated lives in the community um, that they choose. When um, Diana raised this to us, I uh, said, there's actually a commission that already exists um, that is dedicated specifically to uh, this, this, this particular piece of disability. Um, which is access. Um, and as she raised the idea of durable accommodations, um, I said, Diana, that's a fantastic term. I don't know that I've heard it before. And she said, yeah, it's because I think I might have made it up. Um, um, but through that and through the conversations and through the great um, work with um, Phil McFall, um, we found our way to you today and really want to, I've, I've come to support um, the criticality of this issue, uh -huh. uh, come to reaffirm um, CDA's uh, role um, in this, um, and as kind of, as a sister entity, bring it over to you to say, um, this, is, this is really yours, um, uh, how can we be helpful? So thank you. Thank you, and it, it is a collaborative um, partnership that I think we'd be working together with. But I do believe most importantly, um, this falls under, when you talked about the hotels um, being more accessible, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to be part, part of this commission. Um, due to my travels and what I've been out and exposure to many facilities not being accessible. And when you use the term durable accommodations, I thought, okay, I haven't heard that one yet. What specifically are you referring to when you have that in mind? So for Joaquin in particular, and you know, we've worked with families in the past who also needed a different type of durable accommodation, but there is a way to collaborate to make an environment uh, accessible to all people universally. So one, uh, one of the things he needs is no carpeting for sanitation. So he needs something that's easily sanitizable. He also needs something in his house, for instance, he has shatterproof windows because there's a lot of banging that happens on a day when he's not feeling well and there's a lot of behavioral dysregulation. He bangs on walls, he bangs on windows. Um, also, if there's a toilet tank lid that can come off the toilet, it could be thrown and it has been thrown. Right now, the way we designed his place is he's got a toilet that is like the ones you would find in a recreation 
you know, in a park, a public park that has no tank, the, the, the apparatus is inside the wall, that the tank is inside the wall. Um, just no lamps out. You just, it would be, things are all built in and sturdy. Mm-hmm. And you can make a beautiful environment even in his places. Um, I mean, his isn't designed by professional designers, but it's pretty cool. He's mm-hmm. got mur- murals on his walls. Um, everything is bolted down or covered up with some kind of protective um, grill, metal grill. Um, and the, I, I've seen beautiful environments that are also durable out in public places. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, thanks for the clarification. I, I have a clear picture now. Um, so what I see is probably in um, our next meeting is really or trying to collaborate with the emergency preparedness. I know I was recently asked to be part of that um, group statewide um, and actually, actually also internationally on how we can make um, emergency preparedness more accessible for people with disabilities, not only in this country and this nation, but also worldwide as we are seeing things evolving um, across, across the world globally. So I, I would like to see us really look at the collaboration between the three of us um, to, to looking at how we can make hotels or other facilities that would be used for emergency preparedness. Um, I know there's many um, options that are available that also um, aren't only for hotel, aren't, aren't only hotels, but I think that's something that um, I would also gain more knowledge in while working with the Emergency Preparedness um, Commission. And I was going to be actually talking to this person in, in regards to my role. So I think this is a good starting point. And I think that um, this would also tap into other families who have um, siblings with developmental disabilities. So across the regional centers also, we need, we need to collaborate in partnership with across the state. I believe that's important to make sure that we look at all the needs of, of this population group as well as um, not only people with disabilities, diverse disabilities, but also seniors who also might need additional support, um, who don't have um, resources to kind of um, not knowing what to do at the last minute during an emergency. So um, thank you for bringing this up. And I, um, I also open it to other commissioners who might have input who've been on the commission much longer than I have, but those are just a few of my ideas to get started on this. Do we have any hands raised um, who would like to participate um, on input before we move forward? Steven Simon here in LA, still looking for the raise hand button myself. So if I may okay. jump in. Please jump um, in. So two thoughts. One, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Pastora, uh, Pastora Carson for uh, raising this. Um, I agree. Um, um, with uh, Dr. Hassan, Hassan's um, points. So I'm, I'm the, um, uh, the ADA coordinator or the uh, head of disability here in Los Angeles. Um, I do think tactically our easier route to move forward in this space is in the emergency um, preparedness and response side, as was pointed out. I know you mentioned in your narrative that, you know, just for really travel and tourism as well, it would be nice to have this kind of space available. Um, so it's a regulatory ask there. I do, um, so what I would ask, I'd love to have a conversation uh, if that's appropriate offline um, to see how we can help and explore this here in Los Angeles. Um, I definitely want to broaden out this discussion of what um, these standards are. I mean, I really, let's, I I heard everything you said and made total sense. Uh, I don't know if that's been um, sort of scribed at some point and really broken down into language that is um, you know, designed as a traditional standards. I'd love to do that. I'm so glad to see Aaron uh, on board here. It's the kind of cross collaboration I love. Um, so we just, I'd, I'd like to help in that process. That said, I'm going to almost go back on a key item I said there. You know, our, our travel and tourism folks here, at least our convention center, and then maybe some of the hotels related to that, we're investing a lot in that space because of um, particularly LA 28 coming, the Olympics and Paralympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be an opportunity to pilot something. I, I it's hard for you to imagine an across the board 
standard in all our hotels and motels at this point, but let's get started somewhere and see if we can get some built out examples. So I'd love to um, support working on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other comments at this time before we move on? So I'd like you to note that we will be following through on this. Um, I do take every request very seriously and um, would like to see action actually on how with the next steps they would be. And I think um, Steve and Simon actually brought up some great points as far as collaboratives. Chair Commissioner O'Hessen, I'd like to also um, acknowledge before we move on, uh, Emily Miller from the office of Senator Brian Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have a comment or a statement that you wanted to make at this point? No, but thank you. Okay. All right, great. All right, then um, hearing none, I'd like to move on to our um, agenda item for number four. And I'm really excited to introduce our new CCTA um, executive director. So April Dawson is now our new executive director. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Phil McFall in regards to introducing April. And I think she'll have a few statements to make Thank you, Dr. Commissioner L. Hessen. This is Phil McFall. I'm the Operations Manager here at California Commission on Disability Access. And yes, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our new Executive Director, April Marie Dawson. Um, April comes to us from uh, resources, for in, resources for Independent Living, which I'll refer to as RIL for REAL, where she, where she previously served as Executive Director. REAL is a social justice organization dedicated to advancing social socioeconomic independence of people with disabilities through peer-supported, consumer-directed, independent living services and advocacy. Prior to REAL, April led nonprofits in the San Francisco Bay Area and in the state of Oregon. In addition to her executive director duties, she has served leadership roles on the Sacramento County Continuum of Care Advisory Board, Sacramento Regional Transit Mobility Advisory Committee, the Mayor's Climate Commission, and the California Committee on the employment of people with disabilities. April is a graduate of CSU, California State University, Sonoma, and she was born with spina bifida and is a wheelchair user. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, walking, I'm sorry, reading, walking her dog, and traveling. A quote from April, I'm honored to be appointed as the Executive Director of the California Commission on Disability Access. I look forward to engaging with the business and disability communities to increase access for all. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Phil. And thank you, uh, Chair L. Hessen. And I just wanted to say, you know, I feel so welcomed. I want to thank all of the commissioners for entrusting me with this important role. I feel so honored. And I'm so excited that, that the Education and Outreach Committee is my very first uh, mm -hmm. commission meeting. And I'm really already excited to hear all of the cross collaboration and engagement. Uh, by the commissioners and community members that are here today, you know, just listening to um, Diana talk about her brother and about emergency preparedness, that really reminds me of a lot of the work that I have done when I worked in the Bay Area, um, and also with the independent living centers on increasing, you know, the resilience of people with disabilities, and, and I do think that um, I'm really excited about the idea of, of the idea of durable environments and also including people with, with lots of different types of disabilities into that conversation because I'm, I'm not sure that the conversation is as cross disability as it could be. So I'm very excited to be working with all of you. I just want to let everyone know that my, my door is open to you. Um, if the staff could, if, if Abby or a staff member could please type my, uh, my contact information in the chat um, I'm available via email or by phone, and I, I work for all of you. And so my, my goal is to increase access for everyone in California. And I, I'm very excited uh, to get to know you and engage with you. 
and uh, move the commission's work forward. So thank you again for entrusting me with this honor and for having me here today. Thank you and welcome again. And I, I know we're gonna have um, a lot of great things move forward with our, with our partnerships. Are there any comments from any subcommittee commissioners or um, other attendees at this point? All right. Chair Commissioner El Hassan, I do not mm -hmm. see any hands raised for um, any individuals, any individuals wanting to speak. Okay. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, <laughs> So in doing so, I guess we'll move forward to give another additional comments to item number five. So this is talking about the listening forum. And what I'd like to do at this point is refer to our new executive director, April Dawson, to further discuss on CCDA listening forum. I'll turn it over to you, April. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl Hassan. Well, I'd like to start off with just talking a little bit about the listening forum concept and a little bit about the work that is being done to make those happen. And if Commissioner Paragonia would like to, to add context to what I'm saying, um, I welcome his, his comments as well. And so as, as you all are probably aware that our mission is to facilitate dialogue between the business community and individuals with disabilities. And one of the things that we want to do to further our purpose is to really talk about um, the issues that people with disabilities and businesses encounter when they're interacting with one another. And I always believe that all of us are more alike than we are different. And uh, one of the ways that we'd like to achieve the goal of, of increasing communication and, and problem solving between the disability community and businesses is this idea of listening sessions. And I attended a really great meeting uh, with Commissioner Parabonia and representatives from the Department of Rehabilitation to talk about the idea of collaborating on some listening sessions. We, we had discussed uh, this idea of having representatives from the disability and business communities and coming up with either a panel discussion of experts uh, to talk about issues such as uh, service animals, access in older buildings, emergency management, or, or accessible parking as just some of some topic of ideas um, to start with a panel conversation, but then also have breakout sessions. And also to try to also address, you know, what are some of the, the stories that we tell ourselves about one another? You know, I think that a lot of some of the things that we talked about in the meeting yesterday was that uh, sometimes we can think that we're siloed the disability and business communities but as we all know there are business owners who have disabilities and and all of us are, are trying to achieve the same goal and so how can we demystify some of these conversations and uh, move the dialogue past just simple awareness into action and um, I'm really excited about the idea of our commission uh, getting out there into the community and advancing these conversations and really hearing from those two communities about how we can uh, break down some of the misconceptions about access. Uh, Commissioner Caravagna, would you like to add anything to what I've said? I wanna first of all add that I, I support what you say. <clears throat> Very, very much. I, I think what, what we're facing is the largest cultural change we're going to see in our careers because there are more people in our community now with disabilities than ever before. The number is increasing and we still have a segment of the community that really doesn't know kind of what they want to do with that, how to, how to move forward, how to achieve cultural competency. So we've been talking as a society at each other rather than to each other. And I think the, least, the listening forms are designed to be centered around topics that, that raise concern and that people have divergent issues about and have a facilitated discussion to identify common ground, which 
could could in some cases like service animals could conceivably result in legislative proposals. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. I don't know whether that really adds anything, April, to what you were saying, but I just want to really be clear that I'm supportive of what you're doing. Thank you, Commissioner Parabonia. Does anyone have any questions about this concept or Cheryl Hessen, I'll turn it back over to you. Um, I do. So I love the concept, but what, I, what I've experienced in the past on serving on many boards and many commissions is that we not only want to hear, but we want to take next steps for action. Um, and I know uh, Michael Pepperon mentioned about legislation, but also when you're partnering up with businesses, um, it's important for businesses to actually have um, next steps and tools, um, look at things that have done in other places or other countries even on how they've addressed issues in relationship to um, whatever topic that's up for discussion. So that's, that's just my input is that um, we need to look at from a bigger picture is how does this um, forum take next steps for collaboration and action. That's just my input. This is Commissioner Parabani, if I may. When we were talking with uh, Rehab about working together and creating these listening forms, one of the concepts that we talked about was the concept of <clears throat> over the next year having perhaps three forms and dealing with different issues centered around the question of what do you need, you know, and, and then in October of next year, have a form that produces results that talks about, you know, we've had these meetings with you, we've obtained your input, these are the things that you were saying you needed guidance on, here they are, they're going to be available on our websites, plural, because mm -hmm. I would hope that Rehab and, and us would both have uh, websites sharing this information so that there would be a deliverable at the end. Right. And I think it would help put the commission in the minds of many people as a resource that, that is addressing what they say they need. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any other input or comments from our committee members? Chair, sure. okay. Commissioner L. Hessen, I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Well, I think this is a great um, stepping stone and, and moving forward. And I know that our potential topics will be growing um, as we talk to um, other members and moving forward. For example, I know for the parking, there was um, a new that was brought up to my attention, which had to do with the um, chargeable stations and how that's going to be put into place. And now with emergency management, there's a lot of information that we were just exposed to and have knowledge now about that we'd want to incorporate as part of that in regards to having more facilities available to people across disabilities. All right, so hearing none, uh, there's no more comments. I'd like to move forward with agenda item six, which has to do with our newsletter. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Analyst Presley Stroder. If you wanna give us an update on our CCDA newsletter, that'd be great. Hi, okay, thank you, uh, Chair Commissioner Dr. L. Hessen. I will uh, talk a little about the newsletter we had brought up in the last uh, education and outreach meeting. Basically, we are, uh, the newsletters in the drafting process, we're working to finalize edits. So if we don't get the summer issue out, you know, we can just make, make it a fall issue. Uh, some of the things that consist in this newsletter, we have a section for our, uh, 
uh, Angela Jamont's promotion to the California Bureau of Real Estate Appraisers. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a section thanking Commissioner Paravagna for his time as an interim executive director. Mm -hmm. Another part that we're doing is how we talked about wanting to highlight different chairs. So we had Downey in the first one newsletter that happened last year. So this year mm -hmm. we went to the vice chair for this issue. So we have uh, Commissioner Wheelie on a recent project that he accomplished in Reno slash Sparks, Nevada. And then in our future newsletters, we'll make sure to highlight different commissioners' accomplishments and just go on. And so that way we always have updates on commissioners to make the overall CCDA be well known to all, all everybody. And then uh, one of the other main highlights is we do talk about the top 10 construction related disability access violations. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this newsletter, we're focusing on the number one issue that happened between July and December of 2021. And then below it, we will have all kinds of links for ADA compliance for business property owners. So that way they can stay up to date. And we are very excited to get this newsletter out. So I am hoping it is sooner than later and everyone can check it out. So are we gonna also be highlighting um, each subcommittee's current work in progress? So the legislative committee, the education outreach committee, we don't have that in this one. I know for f we will do that in the annual report, but we can always add that into our next newsletter. So that's a really good idea. So thank you very much. I'll make sure to note that in. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, if there's any questions on the newsletter, let me know. If not, I will pass it back to Chair Commissioner uh, Dr. L. Helson. Thank you so much, Presley, for the update. I'm excited to see it posted in our on our site? Definitely. Our website? Okay. Um, all right, any other comments before we move forward? Chair Commissioner Dr. El Hessen, I do not see any indication from members of the commission, committee members, or the public that would like to speak. Thank you, Teresa. Um, so with that, I'd like to move on to agenda item seven, which talks about our projects and um, Projects in motion or pro projects in progress. That's too many P's for me. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna turn it over to Phil in regards to this part of the presentation. Thank you, Commissioner Hudson. Um, yes, this, again, this is Phil McFaul, Operations Manager here at CCBA. And I'd like to talk to you today a little bit um, about our Disability Access and Education Revolving Fund, more specifically the quick reference guide that you see in front of you. So this is something that we've been working on here at the commission. And the, the purpose of this document is uh, to educate cities on what their allocation of the fund should be used for. So the Disability Access Education Revolving Fund is a fund that is the main purpose of that fund. Um, and uh, what we try to highlight here is a CAS, CAS Certified Access Specialist Certification Training and Retention. And what you see before you there is our um, draft of that information. Um, and what we've really tried to do here is a high level, high level document describing what the fund is, how it should be used, but it doesn't go into the details in this particular document. What we, our goal with this document is, is to basically get this out to businesses around California, but also mm -hmm. strike their interest in coming to an, um, um, some of our, um, there will be listening session type, but it'll be a, presentation more like a training on going a little bit deeper into this, this fund, what the allocation that you have can be used for, and really, like I said, getting way more into detail. Um, what we found by doing a little bit of research, our previous research, um, when we've reached out to some of the cities, is that a little bit of confusion on what the fund is for, what it can be used for. Um, Cities were using um, the 5% uh, five of the funds that were allocated for administrative fees, but they weren't using it for the purpose, which is a certified uh, the, the cash training and retention. Um, so again, what you're looking for, what you're looking at here is just our first outreach to um, businesses around California to educate them on the fund and more stoke their interest in you know, meeting with us and, and doing a little bit more. So what we wanna do after getting this into their hands is to set up, uh, we looked at it more of a three-prong approach. This would be prong number one. Prong number two would be um, uh, brown bag 
I keep using that term, but we're uh, uh, more of a, uh, a webinar type of situation where you log in and then we go a little bit deeper. And then on top of that, we're looking at getting out into the different communities around California and doing a more um, upfront and in-person um, presentation of this uh, information, uh, a more of a Q&A type of situation. Um, and so this will be um, something we're getting out. We're waiting for, on a little bit of legislation to make sure that um, things kind of stay, stay the same. As long as they stay the same, um, I won't get into that right now, but basically what we want to do is we want to move forward with this and get this out to businesses as soon as we are um, ready to move forward with it. And um, I'd like to open it up to anybody who has any comments or questions on this. If not, so I'll what we're seeing up on the screen right now, is this going to be put it on our website? Is that what the intention is then? Um, this is going to be a mailer. So we'll oh, okay. get this out to some of the chambers around California, but also a targeted uh, email list, which we're working on right now, trying to develop a list of people that would make sense to get this document to first. Um, that is something we will have um, additionally on our website as well. Right, I think that would be an important link. Um, just with the caption, what are authorized expenditures for local funds for cities or something like that. Right. Right. Um, so when you talk about deliverables, the quick reference guide, that's great. So when you talk about information, informational sessions in person and virtual, are you also looking at webinars? That's, that's the idea. Um, and the, 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 the prong two and prong three haven't completely been solidified yet. What we're thinking about is getting in front of people with a webinar type of situation where you can tune in and get a little bit more. Um, that's, I was calling it brown bag, but yes, webinar is a better word. Um, where you can you know, tune in and get a little bit more uh, information. This, again, this is designed to just kind of um, get people in the door like, kind of, oh, I didn't even know I had this, or oh, I didn't know anything about this. So this is kind of a little high level, but if you want to know more, please attend our webinar. In addition to that, we want to, uh, again, like I said, the next phase would be to get out to the communities and present this information in person, maybe a, a chamber or someplace where people can come in in, in, a, in a certain area. So let's say mm -hmm. we're in Los Angeles, we would be somewhere in Los Angeles, people can come from Long Beach, you know, anywhere around the area to come in mm -hmm. and get a little bit more information, ask us questions face-to-face -face and, you know, have more materials available for them. Um, have you thought about having it taped and then putting it on YouTube as a future reference guide? So anyone who couldn't attend, wasn't present, it would still be available as a tool. Yes, we have not discussed that, but that is a great idea. So that is something we will absolutely. Yeah, I think YouTube is such a popular educational and informational source um, when we can actually use it to deliver information, especially in regards to access. Agreed. Thanks. Any other questions from our members? Chair, Commissioner, Dr. El Hassan, I do not see any indication from our committee members, our commissioners, or members of the public that would like to comment on this agenda item. Uh, this is Commissioner Paravani. I, I would like to make one quick question, which is if we move toward um, YouTube publications, um, Phil, do you know whether there's any um, procedures we have to go through to get it approved through DGS? Uh, that's what we would need to do. So whatever we develop or whatever we come up with as far as a, uh, you know, whatever this webinar um, uh, works out to be, before we were able to, you know, move forward with any YouTube posting, which we, you know, we'll move, forward, we'll reach out to DGS, um, um, we'll make sure that we're doing everything, you know, within bounds in order to make this uh, available. But um, yes, that's a that's a great question, and that's something that we do need to consider when we when we move towards YouTube or broadcasting anything outside of, you know, outside of DGS or the CCDA role. Thank you. That's what I thought. Okay. Good. We will do oh. that. Thank you. Yeah, so any, I know in the past, Angela did a, a BizNAR for businesses. Do you know if that was taped? I can look in the, um, uh, which, are you talking about the one, was it the one last year? Yes. Uh, I don't think it was on, is it, I don't think it's a YouTube production, but I believe we do have, no. yeah, 
Yeah, if we have a video on it, and that would be what what I'd like to see is um, maybe once we get approval and guidelines of how it can be distributed um, in regards to YouTube or another um, media source for educating the community at large or um, businesses at large, I think that would be a great um, you know, series that we can do for businesses. Okay. Showing, showing us an action, act, uh, showing us an action on the steps we're taking to help educate businesses and the community in regards to access and where they can go and how to get started and making their businesses more accessible. Absolutely. That particular one had some major technical difficulties. So <laughs> I probably have to edit that one because there were some big misses in that one. But I, I absolutely, I, I hear you on the making it a, you know, a series of- Yeah. So then the gaps that are missing, um, my thoughts are we can, um, fill it in with uh, PowerPoints or whatever topic that was cut out because of whatever technical difficulties was there and still kind of piece it together for the presentation in the future. So just some thoughts. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. And so I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Commissioner Lassie. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so any other um, comments at this point? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I was supposed to go to Abby. Abby has the next- uh, Yeah, I was just saying. So my apologies, Abby. Um, we're just gonna talk a little bit now about the Spartan campaign. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, I'll give you all a little quick update on the accessible parking campaign. So the CCDA's accessible parking campaign has been making great progress on developing working drafts of their toolkits. So the focus of the accessible parking campaign is to formulate and establish toolkits that will eventually be distributed to stakeholders and businesses across California to help mm -hmm. alleviate parking violations as it relates to accessibility requirements. So right now we have two work groups that are meeting to review and to develop the working drafts of their toolkit. We have one work group, which is made up of ADA coordinators and business owner operators, as well as a second group of individuals from the construction industry. So the idea is to be able to create a document that individuals from those both from those two industries would be able to utilize in order to help alleviate parking lot violations as it does relate to accessibility requirements. And then these toolkits will eventually be distributed by the end of 2023, as you can see on the timeline we have projected right now. And then I will turn that back over to you unless there are any other questions on that. And then I will go ahead and move on to our next project. Sounds great. Any other questions from our members before we move on? Chair Commissioner Dr. Hessen, I do not see any indication of hands raised or commentary in the chat. Okay, thank you. And then okay. with that being also, then with that being said, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you, Teresa, um, our data and research analyst for presenta presentation on attorney noncompliance. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, thank you, Abigail. Uh, so, um, as you remember, uh, we have worked on numerous uh, projects to uh, address the non-compliant, the issue of non-compliance with Civil Code Section 55.32. Um, just to recap, the uh, code is mandating that attorneys that are submitting ADA cases, uh, construction-related ADA cases, um, provide a copy to the California Commission on Disability Access um, in their web portal database, um, a copy of the case filing um, in addition to the case resolution report, either as a settlement, a uh, judgment, um, or uh, what have you um, into our database within five business days of the court filing. And in order to address this still issue of noncompliance, um, our next step is to uh, create letters that we can submit to uh, various organizations. We are still in negotiations um, and uh, development 
uh, which organizations we would like to reach out to, but um, essentially the California State Bar, as well as disability advocacy organizations um, to uh, alert attorneys about this mandate of submitting cases, the requirement. Um, in addition to that, these letters um, may also reflect as we're waiting for Assembly Bill 2917 to pass, which is um, addressing disability access, internet website violation, parking violations, and exterior path of travel alleged violations as well, that we would reflect um, that requirement as well for attorneys that are submitting disability access uh, construction related uh, violations uh, cases as well as their case resolutions to us. So um, that is our current status right now. We have draft letters ready to reflect um, the addition of website violations as well as exterior path of travel on parking lots. Um, those type of cases are required that or they are it is it will be a requirement if 2917, Assembly Bill 2917 is passed, that the CCDA will need to have copies of those type of cases as well. Thank you. You're welcome, Chair Commissioner L. Hessen. Do we have any other um, comments or questions regarding this topic in, for Teresa? Okay, seeing none. So I was just curious, I'm just going to throw this out there, but um, as we move forward in regards to access and litigation issues, um, would it go also beyond um, access into the building where you have access inside the building too, for example, restrooms and um, doctor's offices where doors are Hard to open sometimes. So are we yes. looking? Are we looking beyond that? Yes. Yeah. Um, currently, right. our cases do cover uh, those um, issues as well: toilet, uh, laboratory mm -hmm. facilities, as well as access to goods, services, interior um, path of travel, mm -hmm. um, as well. So we are already tracking those cases, those type of cases that. Um, or those type of alleged violations. So our database currently does have drop down menus that track those type of violations as well. Okay. Um, the uh, website violations, the path of travel exterior, um, as well as the, uh, uh, excuse me, the um, parking lots, those are a reflection of part of the top 10 alleged right. violations. So, um, but we are already in the process of tracking those cases as well that you had just uh, referred to. All right, thank you so much. Any other questions or comments from? Chair, Commissioner L. Hessen, I do not see any indication in the chat as well as any hands raised for individuals who would like to speak on what I had just uh, addressed for agenda item seven. All right, thank you. Um, so hearing none, I'm gonna move on to agenda item eight, which actually has to do with future agenda items. And I'd like to open it up to our commission and also um, the public, if there's any um, information that they'd like to see as we move forward. Okay, I would like to. Oh, um, add sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Teresa. Are there? Oh, any ones? no, no worries. Um, I was just letting you know that there has there's no indication of hands raised or okay. uh, indica individuals in the chat that would like to uh, provide uh, suggestions. All right, thank you so much. Um, I would like to hear someone um, maybe come to speak about emergency evacuation um, and where their issues are in regards to disability access across the state. Um, I think that would be a good collaborative to start with as we're moving forward on um, partnering with other groups for, for that.
Okay. All right. Well, then there's that's my feedback on where we're moving forward. And I'd like to move on then to our final agenda item, which we'd like to adjourn. So if there may have a, a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. This is Commissioner Paravani. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Do I have a, a second, please? This is committee member Zenit Hassan, I'll second. Thank you, Zenit. All right, hearing that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. With that, um, I'd like to thank everyone for participating and also um, for bringing up a new area for us to look into as far as access. Thank you, Diana uh, Carson and, um, and Stephen uh, from the Disability Developmental Disability Council. If there's um, no other, I'd like to just say our next meeting date is going to be when? For, for our group to know. Hi, Chair Commissioner El Hassan. So we are putting together staff and internally we'll be putting together the calendar for next year's meetings, but our next meeting is designated for the legislative committee meeting, which is on, gonna be on September, Wednesday, September 7th from 1.30 to 3 p.m. And then our next full commission meeting is going to be on Wednesday, October 26, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, great. So our education outreach committee is not going to be meeting the rest of this year? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their afternoon. Thank you again for participating. I loved all of your input. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Take care, folks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.